All right, three and two and one. Action! Hello, world, everybody. Hello, world, everybody. everybody. Hi, Joe. Hello, I'm Joe. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good myself. Doing great, man. You know, um, your your young blood has gone and dug up some more interesting things than uh I could imagine. So, you know, uh, I used to have this block on the Crusades. I don't have any reason to go into that. So Joe hit me the other day like, hey, let's go to the Crusades. And I'm all like, listen, man. And then uh, I said to myself real fast, hey, listen, man. If you give him a listen, man speech, that ain't really going to, like, you know, make any sense of, like, why he's working with you. So I'm in, like, I'm all like, uh, okay, Crusades it is. And so when we look into the Crusades, uh, found found something uh, very interesting. Um, and this is just touching on the subject. This isn't even, hey, we're going to dive in and we're going to go into the individual Crusades. If you can see here on the screen, just under Crusades on the Google, uh, it says, uh, you know, five, 400 years of Crusades, right? 1095 to 1492. We all know what happens in 1492. So when we look at how we've been looking at the Bible, uh, or some of the things we've covered, Joe, besides, besides Isaiah. So Joe started reading Isaiah with us from the beginning, right? We did this one from the beginning. And so this is where we're at. And uh, what are some of the other things that we've read? Um, like scripture reading? Scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jasher. Jasher. Um, Daniel. Daniel. We then read um, some of Proverbs. Hand in. Right. To, um, a bunch of scripture, uh, Maccabees, right? We threw in uh, some Halloween, we threw in uh, yeah. different show, uh, some some Apis Bull, yeah, it shows um, the difference between pretty much, even though we didn't fight out saying, but it showed you the difference between Levitical and Christian codes. Christian. So, last one. Joe suggested, and that took us into these councils. And then again, we went to Maccabees uh, off of this. And this is to show exactly how Joe fits in and how the old lessons of one man and how it's come to be with here is another piece of a pie with someone else's. Uh, thoughts on the material um and it's not going to take a lot to show how this all connects we took a nice stroll through egypt and abraham's time made a lot of discoveries what, what, of what uh, points to a very interesting location um we've been down the water slide with this We've, we've examined where Isaac might have been, the same places where the scripture calls Bema, okay, or Bemu, whichever version you, you, you read, right? So, there's a lot of things we haven't examined. But, as we stated in the last uh, video, this timeline is probably going to pick up with the church. Now, we'll see why and how these councils led to this. Now, the councils 
might not necessarily be brought up in this, but this will, this should solidify a lot of fact. What's the definition of fact? Evil etymology. That's the uh, evil deed. Evil deed. The fact of the matter here, we will be able to identify a lot of facts, evil deeds done. Okay, so we're going to start off with our good old child blanket called Wikipedia. And we're going to read a little bit in Wikipedia. So, Crusades, Wikipedia, for other uses, <laughs> see Crusade and Crusader. You want to pick up? All right. The Crusades were a series of religious wars initiated, supported, and sometimes directed by the Latin Church in medieval in the medieval period. The term refers especially to the Eastern Mediterranean campaigns in the period between. Uh, 1096 and 1271 that had the objective of recovering the Holy Land from Islamic rule. Okay, so right here we can see sometimes it's directed by the church. To have an army, you need to fund an army. How else do you fund an army? By hmm? church money. Donations, taxes, church money. If we look over to the right, it says 14th century miniature of William of Tyr. So we have William of Tyr, right? Historia de Otmira of the Battle of the Second Crusade of National Library of France, Department of Manuscripts, French 22495. FOL, be VOL for us, that'd be a 157. All right, excuse me, but 154. So let's continue. Uh, the term has also um, been applied to other church san sanctioned campaigns uh, for to combat paganism and heresy uh, to resolve conflict among rival Roman Catholic groups or to gain political and tyrannical advantage. So here you see the church acts as the Fed. Two states have a problem, the Fed steps in. Two Roman Catholic states have a problem, the Vatican steps in. Let's continue. Differences, the difference between the, these campaigns and other Christian religious conflicts was that they were considered a, a potential exercise that brought forgiveness of sin. Declared by the church. Excuse me. Hold on. It's a uh, pen penitent, like a uh, pen penitent. Yeah, it's penance as repentance of sins, as well as an alternate name for the Catholic, comma Lutheran, comma Eastern Orthodox or Oriental Orthodox sacred sacrament of reconciliation or confession. So what they're saying is, is they formed armies. Instead of paying the men, they said, if you go and fight for us, your sins shall be forgiven by killing other people. So with that, like a, in lieu of confession, <laughs> commit this war, it's the same thing. <laughs> right. Whenever you're ready. All right. Uh, historians. Historians contest the uh, definition of the term crusade. Some um, some res uh, restrict restricted on, on some restricted to only um, on pilgrimages to Jerusalem. Others include all Catholic military campaigns with a promise of spiritual benefit. You see that right there, the promise of spiritual benefit. See, it's the same thing they said for the Crusades. Go and fight for us and seize Jerusalem, right? So at this point, the church, it is in control. They are claiming by the Latins. So, go ahead. I was going to say, 
that kind of uh, it seemed like it could have answered your old question. Like, remember, remember that old question you had? What would make these people just up and leave everything that they have? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. These people don't look like they're starving. These people don't look like they're standing third. But right. it's a promise of some spiritual stuff. They can change in your life spiritually. Right. These, if these people clung to the church, that's more than enough to get them motivated to do whatever they do. Remember, the church wanted any soul that they can tax. Just worship our God and follow our rules. And we can be the authority over you, meaning we can send out our military and knock you in the head if we wanted to. If you're arguing with somebody that you feel it's, it's legitimate, don't worry about that. We'll come in and tell you what to say and what to think based on these rules that we have here already. Now, just like you have councils you have anti people or and or people that were against the councils at the time the councils were in session so whenever you're ready all right all catholic holy wars uh, or those with a characteristic of religious faith um, in 1095, Pope Urban II claimed the first crusade at the count, Council of Clermont. He encouraged military support for Byzantine Emperor uh, Aloysius. Alex Aloysius. Um, I, uh, Aloysius I against the soldier Turkey and and an armed pilgrimage uh, to Jerusalem. So we should think about this real quick. They're taking a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and they're going to be fighting Turks. So remember, at this point in history, when they go to Jerusalem, they're not fighting Israelites. They're not fighting Judites. They're fighting Turks. Really? <laughs> Across all social strata in Western Europe, there was an enthusiastic popular uh, response. The volunteers took a public vow to join the Crusades. Historians now debate the combination of their motivation, which included the prospect of mass ascension into heaven at Jerusalem, satisfy, uh, satisfying feudal obligations, opportunities for renown and um, economic and political advantages. Um, initial successes established uh, four crusade, crusader states in the Near East, the, uh, the County of Edessa, the Princi Principality of Antioch, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, and the County of Tripoli. The crusaders uh, present the Crusaders present present reminded um, in the religion in some form until hold on the Crusaders uh, present the present presence. Remi their presence remind reminded the religion remained oh remained in the religion region in some I'm to all tore up when <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> The Crusaders' presence remained in the religion, region, in, um, the region, in some form until the city of Acre fell in 1291. I'm bad about that. Yay! Um, it's okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have those times. <laughs> Leading to the rapid loss of all remaining territory in the Levant. After this, there was there were no further crusades to recover the holy city, the Holy Land. Um, proclaimed a proclaimed, proclaimed a crusade in 1123. The struggle between the Christians and Muslims in the Iberian Peninsula was called the Reconquista by Christians. And only ended in 1492 with the fall of the Muslim Empire of Grenada. Um, 
from 1147 campaigns in northern Egypt against pagan tribes were considered crusades. In 1199, Pope Innocent III began the practice of proclaiming political crusades against Christian heretics. In the 13th century, crusading was used against the Cathars in Lang Languedoc and against Bonisa, Bosnia. Um, this practice continued against the well. Waldesians in South Savoy and Hezites in Bohemia in the 15th century and against Protestants in the 16th century in, in the 16th. From the mid 14th century, crusading uh, rhetoric. Yeah, rhetoric was used in response to the rise of, of the Ottoman Empire only ended in 1699 with the war of the holy league unbelievable people ladies and gentlemen are you saying this are you saying this it's a practice continued right against the walt disneyans i'm just joking i had to do that because i would not have pronounced that one right i just i had to do that one so you hear you see here in 1699 right 1700 right it ended with the War of the Holy League. What is this? It's a league created in 1684. I'm going to kick Aminius's butt. Oh, can you hear him screaming? Or is it just me? Can you hear this madness, dude? <laughs> <laughs> the sound of joy, right? 1684 was an alliance organized by Pope Innocent XI uh, to oppose the Ottoman Empire in the Great Turkish War. The League's initial members were the Papal States. Now, now understand, they're states. They're Papal States. Okay, uh... <laughs> We're gonna pause for a second. I'll be right back. Do one. I asked. I I politely asked him to stop screaming. So the baby's gonna replace him now. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days. All right, real quick, we're gonna go over to the uh, list of principal leaders of the Crusades. When we scroll down, it says the First Crusade, 1095 to 1099. Uh, here it says the Peasants Crusade. Prince's Crusade, if you see here, Baldwin, the brother, Baldwin, his brother, founder of the county of Edessa. Now, remember, this isn't the first time we've come across Edessa. We've dealt with Zeus, and here we see Edessa is here, and here we have Antioch. So we can see how close all this really is. Uh, during the timeline. So when we uh, go down a little bit, as we were on Crusades, it shows us in this picture William of Tyr. So I'll just go over here to uh, the list and then it says uh, uh, King of Jerusalem. Uh, that's what's going to stand out. So we, we Skip William of Tyr. Just want to understand. That's what we're doing. Uh, somewhere on here, he's here. I just forgot. So anyway, Kingdom of King of Jerusalem keeps keeps coming up. King of Jerusalem. So we open up King of Jerusalem. You have that one. So many tabs. Kingdom of Jerusalem. King. What's the supreme ruler? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. The kingdom of Jerusalem was the supreme ruler of the kingdom of the king of Jerusalem was the supreme ruler of the kingdom of Jerusalem. Crusader state founded by Christian princes in 1099. The first crusade took the city. Godfrey of Bullion the first ruler of the kingdom of Jerusalem, refused the title king, choosing instead the 
title ad, advocates advocates uh sin sancti simply church church that that is advocate or the leader <laughs> of the church of the holy sepulcher in 1100 baldwin the first godfrey successor was the first ruler crowned as king the city of jerusalem was lost in uh, 1187, but the kingdom of Jerusalem survived. Okay, so survived. let's stop right there. So, imagine <laughs> every time the Israelites, every time the Shemites, every time the Israelites had the kingdom of Jerusalem, they understood that it is the, the what? The soil, the spot, the place? Now you have these heathen practitioners uh, coming and fighting for Jerusalem. And when they cannot hold on to it, they start a practice of packaging up the administration, putting it into a box, and claiming now it to be moved. People need to understand when they claim they're fighting for Jerusalem, we're about to see it's been destroyed. The city is lost. It's gone. The city isn't something you pick up. A temple isn't something you pick up and move. That is the that is complete pagan thought. Let me explain. Oh, we're traveling gypsies. Our tent is our temple. Hey, I get it. This is why people build in stone to say it cannot be moved. So now you have this practice of, oh no, we're, we're going to just move the administration. Ready to continue? Yeah. Moving its capital to Acre in 1191, the city of Jerusalem was recaptured in the Sixth Crusade during 1229-1239. In 1241 through 44, the kingdom of Jerusalem was finally dissolved with the fall of Acre and the end of the Crusades in the Holy Land in 1291. After the Crusader states ceased to exist, the title of King of Jerusalem was claimed by a number of European noble houses descendant of the, um, the kings of Cyprus or the kings of Naples. Um, the purely ceremonial title of King of Jerusalem is currently used by Philip the Sixth of Spain. It is claimed by the Otto von Habsburg, uh, Habsburg as Habsburg uh, pretender, and by the kings of Italy until 1946. Okay, so what in the hell is that Habsburg pretender? Karl von Habsburg, right? Born in 1961, is an Austrian politician and currently head of the House of the Habsburg of Lorraine, which used to rule the lands of the Holy Roman Empire. The Habsburg money, uh, monarchy of uh, the uh, Empire of Austria, the Austro Hungarian, blah, 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 blah. So again, if you see these people, they are completely foreign to what Jerusalem even is. They're foreign to their people. And you see this Carl von Hasberg is, uh, what is the guy that's in Syria right now? Yeah. Uh, Bashar 
al-Assad. Now, if you look at this Habsburg guy, all right, here's this one, right? You see that it's a very Arabic look. You see this image right here. If you put that picture next to Ashad, you can see there is some sort of a resemblance. Now, I'm not giving a shit about down to every minute detail. Look how, you know, if you see Ashad moving around, you see he stoops his head a lot. Uh, and when you see how the chin is, how the, you know, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a lot, in, in, you know, you see how, right? You see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, clearly something's funky about all this. These people always fighting over, uh, <laughs> the, the children of God's property, right? Uh. And again, you have the king of Italy it was a title given to the ruler of the kingdom of Italy after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. The first to take the title was Odosear, a barbarian military leader. Oh, sh I'm done. All right. So, again, you know, the temple is destroyed. It would never have been handed over to barbarians. Clearly, the kings of Italy, Italy is part of ancient Britain, right? It's No, 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 it's part of Europe, right? And this is where the barbarians came in, and here we have a barbarian leader, right? In the 5th century, late 5th century, followed by the Ostrogoths king in the mid-6th century, right? Frankish, this is today's French, the Frankish conquest of Italy. Right? The Franks didn't stop there. They, they continued to France. So here you can completely see however they deem fit to call it their claim of title. They, they claim to be these things. So as you can see in the Greatest book ever. This is why the Most High says, no, you're going to deal with a whole different name. As a people. So. Uh, I believe we're stopping there. Uh, there's just. A lot of this is just uselessness. This is just the barbarian effect on after Jerusalem fell. Uh, so let's go further. Ready to go to the Siege of Acre? Yeah, I got it done. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go to the Siege of Acre. Okay. So, Esheru Esh has left. Farrakhan, Hitler is up there screaming. <laughs> screaming his orders. All right, I'm ready when you are. All right. Siege of Acre, 1291. Siege of Acre, also called Fall of Acre, took place in 1291 and resulted in the Crusaders losing control of Acre to the Mamluks. It is considered one of the most important battles of the period. Although the crusade, although the <coughs> crusading movement continued for several more centuries, the capture of the city marked the end of the, the further crusades to the Levant. When Acre fell, the crusaders lost their last major stronghold of the crusader kingdom of Jerusalem. They still maintained a fortress at the northern city of Tars Tartus, today in northwestern Syria, engaged in some coastal raids. And attempted in in and attempted an incursion from the tiny the tiny island of Roy. Um but when they lost that as well in thirteen oh two, the siege of in the siege of Ruid, um the Crusaders no longer controlled any part of the Holy Land. All right. So 
you have a lot of these church symbols over here. <clears throat> so all these different churches versus Mameluk Sultanate. So I think it's time we look at Mameluk and understand what beat the living crap out of the barbarian. So, <coughs> let's learn about Mameluk. Mameluk. Mameluk Sultanate, Cairo. Uh, the Mameluk Sultanate was a medieval realm spanning Egypt. The Levant and uh, Hias that established itself as a caliphate. Um, it lasted from the over, from the overthrow of the Ayyubid dynasty until the Ottoman conquest of Egypt in 1517. Historians have traditionally broken the era of Mamluks' rule into two periods, one covering 1250 to 1382, the other over 1382 to 1517. Okay. Western historians call the former the uh, Bahari period and the latter the Borja or, or, or Borja not due to the political dominance of the re regimes known by these names <clears throat> during the respective eras. Okay, so going into here, we have uh, Egypt, Levant, and H H Hejaz, right? So uh, here we have the region is in the west of Saudi Arabia. Okay, so when you deal with that, uh, I'm pretty much assuming that it's going to be a straight line, more of a straight line, based on where so Saudi Arabia is down in here, right? Somewhere in there. All right, so this is what they're talking about, uh, somewhere in here, because Egypt. Or where they're calling Egypt to the Levant, right? All right, so and then this is established for the rule of the Caliphate, right? Caliph, Caliphia, Caliphate, Caliphate, right? And it's leadership under a steward with the title, so it's a leader, all right? Um, so as you see, the Bah. Bahri, Bahri, blah, 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 right? And this is the area that they're here. They have Media, Mecca, Syria. Uh, what is that? So I can't read what that one is. But you see Media and Mecca right down in there. All right. And as we go further on the Burji, right? The Burji, it's on the other side. All right. Constantinople, so that would be Turkey, right? I'm going to Trebiz. On the Trebizond. All right, so here is where they're claiming Acre is. And we're going to just, uh, yeah, you can see it. Whatever. Let's just keep going. As soon as you're ready. All right. Contemporary Muslims historian. <coughs> Contemporary Muslim historians refer to the same division as Turkic and Circassian periods in order to stress the change in the ethnic origins of the majority of Mamluks. Okay, so on one end of, I would presume it's the Bahare, right? The Bahare, right? And this end you will be dealing with what? The Turkic origin it says right there, Kuman. Put some Kuman on that, right? You ever, you ever see, uh, what's that, R.I.P.D., and he puts the Kumon on the food to keep the demon out? All right. Ow, Kumon. And on the other side is the Bajuri. Bajuri. Right? And I would assume it during the Mameluk Sultanate. So one of these Mamelukes, we'll explain what the Mameluk is in a second. One of these Mamelukes rise up to become Sultanate. All right, 
and so since they're telling you it's during the Mamluk period on it, so that would be the Sir Circus Cassian. Circusian. All right. So let us understand a little bit more about that. So let's continue. All right. The Mamluk state. Mamluk! Reached its height under Turkic rule and with Arabic culture, and then fell into a prolonged phase of decline under the Circassian. The Circassian decline of stale bread. Ah! <laughs> uh. The Sultanate's um, ruling uh, caste was composed of Mamluks, soldiers of uh, predominant, predominant Predominantly, um, Kumin Kepchiks. That's from, Turkish people from Chimeria. Yeah. Uh, Circassian. That's white people. Ab Ab Kassian, I don't think so. Um, That's Khazar, Kazian, yeah. Ab Kazian. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> uh, Agus Turks and Georgian slave origins. The shoes people be with Uggs in Georgian slave origins, right? So when you look up the Georgian people, they claim to be the people of Moab today, and you know they not, right? And you see what it say right here? A nation of indigenous Caucasians. Caucasians, all right? So you just heard the cast system. Let's go real slow. Mamluk soldiers, predominantly Turks. That's the top of the cast system. Then the next is the circus Cassian. That's white people that can do tricks. Then come the Abkhazian. All right, let's just look at this. It's Look, Northwest Caucasus ethnic group. More white people. Look at that. Anybody shot? Woo! I'm buzzing over here. Why I see history. Why people. They're working side by side with others that are black, black Turks. What does it say in, in that greatest book ever? Hmm? Oh, Timon of Edom, Ottoman, so of Ottoman, is it, am I confused? Is this aren't the nomadic or nomadic Turks different from Ottoman? I gotta understand where all these Turks fall, cause I know somebody go say a Turk, and they go say, "Oh, today the image given for Turks are Caucasus people. You can't have Caucasus people as slaves right here, and free at the same time in other areas, just ruling countries." when these countries that they actually came from fell. So, under the Georgian name, white people. Right? I mean, it says so. It's a Caucasian group. So, that's the Georgian. So, if I say Georgia, right? Let's, let's see if we get it again. Here's a Georgian language, right? Let's see if I just put Georgia on there, right? Georgia, that's a state, that's a country. Here, let's hit country, right? It's a Caucasus region of Eurasia. Did anybody know this? Hmm? Those white people from Georgia. So let's see this, right? So here's Georgia, U.S. state for other uses, Georgia, right? So here's this language, 
right? Whatever that is, right? Is the country of Caucasus region of Eurasia, excuse me, yeah, Eurasia, located across, at the crossroads of Western Asia and Eastern Asia and is bound to the west by the Black Sea. Ooh, so this is right where they started the Caucasus gates, ain't it? This is Caucasus, and the gates is to keep the Caucasus out. And if they got the Black Sea on one side, that's what they said about the gates, right? Where the two mountains come together, and they can't get there nowhere because the mountain's in the water. Okay, and to the north by Russia, to the south by Turkey and Armenia, and to the south east by Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan, oh, that is right, yeah, whatever. Okay, so let's stop with that shit, right? So what is uh, Georgia Arab? Um, it is Islamic Georgia too. There it is, the Emirate of T T Tbilisi, and that was just up on the other Georgia too, Tbilisi. Let me put that up one second. Let me put that back up and say what the capital, the largest city, Tbilisi. <laughs> That's see that white Arabs. They just don't want to acknowledge that they're Arab. They just want to acknowledge that they're a caucus race, but the caucus race is going to come from Arab. They just, they just, 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 just lies, 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 right? Georgians arose from the Clochian and Iberian. No, they didn't. The Clochians are black. The Cloches. Don't, don't, see, come on. See, now they try to take the, the, the Greek hero shit, right? Right? Uh, see, I hate when they do this shit. I'm claiming your adventures as if I've done it. You just can't have it always. Right? Now, you just, if I put cloches now, now they want to show me Arabs. And it wasn't Arabs before. All right? Now, you see. You see, see, they got the black dude right there, right? One's Anatolia, that's the place. That's it. And then Armenia, and there goes the Armenian, right? There's the Armenian. And then the Cloches, that's the black dude right there, okay? The Abizaki or ca Caucasian Negro. See what's going on, right? The, the Negroes of Russia. So because they live near the Caucasian, they'll be calling them the, the Caucasian. Right? See, ah, oh, see, you no, know, something done happen. Right? No. Well, see, look, black Abkhazian, right? It's a black person. How? Who were the coaches? Why were these black people settled near hostile mountains of the Caucasus? How long had they been there? Where did they come from? And what became of their descendants? All right, so. If it's Moors, you already know the Moors in the wild, man. And these people then set up right between. And what are you going to get out of that? You get lonely. <laughs> Look, here is even this image. He's running with his junk out, right? So you know, in Anatolia, the Chochis, right? I told you they was black. I ain't gonna argue with this. I already did the lesson for it. And here you have, right? The Colchis are the Greeks, the black Greeks, and then they went into what? They went into those areas after the Argonaut adventures, right? Argonaut adventures are fighting what? Monsters. Where they go and live? Where the monsters live? Where the monsters go and give? They got locked behind the gates with the caucus people. Right? That's how we have 100 and 
more than 140 variants in the human DNA pool at this time. Back to you, Joe. Wow. While man loops were purchased, their their status was above that of ordinary slaves who were not allowed to carry weapons or perform certain tasks. Man loops were considered to be true lords with social status above citizens of Egypt. Okay, let's so, just, just just stop right there. Go you got something? You want to in? No, no. This is unbelievable. Mamelukes were purchased. They were bought and sold here in America. They were bought and sold, right? Look at this. They were purchased. But they had an attitude that they were true lords. Now, tell me that's not walking backwards and every day. Right, you go kick in the door of McDonald's. I'm the true lord. Like, nigga, stop! I was there when they bought your ass. What is you tripping, fool? Shut up! I have weapons. I'm allowed to carry your, my weapons. So look at these people done conquered Egypt. They're sent by their master to conquer Egypt. They conquer Egypt. And they have a higher social status than the people that they conquered, right? They're the police. Hmm? Walking around, right? In a caste system of their own, right? So it's a caste system on top of, here's the caste system of the rich. Here's the caste system of the enslaved. Here's the caste system of the defeated people we now pee on. Peons. Ready? Yep. Two lords! What fuck? Demonism, nigga. It was declined toward the, the end of its existence. At its height, the Sultanate represented the zenith of medieval Europe. Egyptian. I've never even, medieval Egyptian. I've never even heard anything like that. Yeah. I can line people up. Have you ever heard of medieval Egyptian? What? No. <laughs> it ended with the ancient. <laughs> yeah, you the, medieval Egyptian and Labatian political. Um, Economic and cultural glory in the Islamic golden age. Glory of the Islamic golden Who in the hell even heard of any of this? The Islamic golden age was a period of cultural, economic, scientific flourishing in the history of Islam, traditionally dated from the 8th century to 14th century. Yes. Yes, you you see it on screen, people. Psalms 83. Two Israelites, one more by all saying amen. And a Hellenistic fireball towards us. Couldn't resist. Demonism. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Batman. They done shut everything down. No movies coming out! And you're showing me a preview of Batman? You're still filming? Nobody's running around with a mask on? Where well, we are? I mean, seriously. Lock you away, lock you away, lock this state away and that. Everyone's on lockdown except for the bat. Are you serious? No, Christmas didn't come in July. It was delayed by the plague, but hey. <laughs> it's it's August and we got a preview for the new bat. Hit that button, Joe. Demonism. At its purest. I have to inject it. They make a stupid Joker movie. It has nothing to do with anybody, anything but being nuts.
everything's on lockdown. You haven't seen a movie in a year. Here comes the new Batman. Hmm? And where does all Batman and Gotham, where does all this come from? It comes from Lovecraft. And guess what they came out with? A TV show about Lovecraft stuff. Purely. There is no other form of demonism in this media. Let's continue. Next part. Let's go. We're going to ride through this one, right? For a little. Want to go to Origin? Yeah, let's go to origin this is what the own slave look like this is mr everything this is mr right we're 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 vikings we're this we're 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 early asians we're we're europe we're britain we're the uh we're the East India Tea Company. Hell, you let them keep writing books, they'll, they'll be the Indians of India soon. You read their books, they're the Israelites. You read their books, they're the Moabites. You read their books, they're every ite that's, that's in there. You read their books, they're Adam and Eve. But here they are in other people's books as owned freaking slaves. Slaves that think they are Lord. Two lords! Get back in your goddamn cage. Could you imagine that? Six of these guys working for you, right? You put them up every night, right? Because they're dangerous. <laughs> Time to go to bed. Yes, sir. Right? Then, True Lords! Go to bed! <laughs> Get in your cage! At least you tight. Yes, sir. True Lords. Oh. Right? So here, here they are. Half a century in cuffs. A whole century locked behind a gate. Half a century in cuffs. Now another half a century claim to be everything that they weren't. And, and we've been to the goddamn moon. <laughs> We put it all in the shoebox, right? Sounds stupid, doesn't it? Special slave. Let's go. Whoa, oh, let's get this one. Woo! The, the Mamluks was an owned slave. True Lord! <laughs> <laughs> Distinguished from the Gulf or household slave. After um, though training in various fields such as uh, martial arts, courts, uh, etiquette, and Islamic sciences, um, these slaves were true lords. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time you say slave, I gotta say true lord. <laughs> oh, I said Jesus is great. Oh. They were still uh, expected to remain loyal to their master and serve his household. Uh, Mamluks had formed a part of the state or military apparatus in Syria and Egypt since the late, the, since at least the 9th century, <laughs> rising to become governing dynasties of Egypt and the Levant during the Talunic and Akashiyat period. Each Saeed! 
Something like that. I don't know. I'm just uh, taking a shot there. Hold on for a second. You know, um, I want you to go to the store and get me three rubber hoses, two camels, and a pack of cigarettes. Okay, sir. True Lords, let's roll out. What's up, dude? What are we doing? Uh, I want to get some stuff for Master. Oh, oh, okay. Let's, let's go. <laughs> To imagine a day. Two lords! Hey! I need some milk. Pour me a milk. Wait, but, sir, we're now. <laughs> yes, sir. Two lords! I can't get enough of this shit. Alright, so governing dynasties, right? This is under, this is hidden. Wally, right? is the administrative title that is used in the Muslim world to designate governors of administrative divisions. It is in use in some countries influenced by Arab or Muslim cultures. The division that is a wali governs uh, is called the waliya, waliya, or in case of the Ottoman Turks, blah, 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 blah. So, I want you to remember, we go to Google and type in Arab Masters. Oh, we might as well do Arab Masters, right? We might as well just, just type in Arab Masters and Circassian Slaves, right? Because we already know what happens when we say Arab Masters and Black Slaves. You just get people standing there like they were paid to take a picture. You say Arab Masters and White Slaves, and then it turns into a porno that that's just it's just, it's just real, real bad demonism P purely truly truly got these people in harnesses it's a trip so when you look at this true lords <laughs> it's just <laughs> how'd you become a true lord uh I was a slave. Aren't true lords supposed to be born free, all that good stuff? I, I don't want to get into this. Because, uh, of course, when you point out all the lies, that's racism. When you point out that these people were brought here as slaves, and they were freed by Lincoln, and when the the same group that were still fighting wars in their land in 1865 lost they were brought here and when the warring party were brought with the slaves again these slaves were true lords so again this is how we get the insurrections the riots and the overthrow of the original government This is why we have Islamic rule here, and we do not know it, because we are dealing with the Mamelukes. You already know from the, stat, from the flags and all the damn stars, these are the Circassians. I just read to you a bunch of different Circassians used to work hand in hand with the Turk. The Turk is the master, the Circassian is the slave. They have a caste system. The Turk is on top, the Circassi is on bottom. You don't have to, me, to have me remind you that Esau is black. Do you need me to type in? Well, of course, that would be silly for me to bring it up with the, having the power of Google, right? And when so we'll type in. Afro Turks. Hmm? What do they say? They're Bantu? Afro Abkhazans. Pop back up again. So you got a black and a white population with the same name. 
That sounds like America. One belongs and one's there is what? Well, America your property. That's right. America is slavery, right? Talking about it is racism, right? But it's built on slavery. So talking about America is racism. Talking anything about America is racism. And since they want to control your word, they don't want you to talk. I don't give a shit what you say. You're in your house. You're watching this in your house. You're not watching this out in the public. Johnny Cash is... Go ahead. I suppose say, yeah, establish your house. Stand in your own house. No, nobody's watching this in the store. Nobody's watching this in the public. Are Turks white or Asian, but they show you a black person? Hence, where is Turkey? In, in a, near part, the land's connected to Asia. I don't care what anybody says. You already know it deals with Afro-Asiatic culture. You already know what proxy is. You already know these tribes came in and took over places. Sorry, I'm so excited. I'm just all over the place on this. That's <laughs> okay. I name Luke Regiment. Two slaves! I'm sorry. Regiments consistent. Switched um, it up there. <laughs> said true slaves instead of true lords. Again, True Lords is from up here, where he say, they say True Lords again. These are bot people who call themselves True, true Lords. <laughs> Can't believe this. Oh. Yeah, they were, uh, they were purchased. Yeah, but uh, they're Lords. Oh, how's that work? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> just can't get over this. Menlo regiments uh, constituted the backbone of Egypt's, Egypt's military under Ayyubid's Ayub rule in the late 12th and early 13th century, beginning with uh, Sultan Saladin. Um, R11. 47, 1174 through 1193, who replaced the Fatimid's Black African infantry with Mamluks. Okay, so here you have Saladin, right? So when you watch that uh, movie, they have, what is that? Uh, Something of Heaven. I uh, can't remember what it is. Uh, it is the Crusade movie. Uh, Saladin, the Sultan Saladin, is in control of Jerusalem when the Crusades come in. Uh, the Blacksmith movie, a really slow movie. So let's continue. I can't remember the name. I'm just going. It's not that important. All right. Each Ayyubid Sultan uh, and high-ranking Emir had a private Mamluk uh, corpse. Okay, so an Emir. Uh, can refer to a king, an aristocratic or a noble military title, high office. Uh, the term is, uh, let's go over to Amir real quick. Let's mark that spot and let's go over to Amir. You have that one up or can you open it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it up. Whenever you're ready. All right. And Amir, sometimes translated Amir, Amir or Amir can refer to a king or an aristocratic or noble and military title of high office used in a variety of places in the Arab countries, West Africa, Afghanistan, and in the Indian subcontinent. <clears throat> the term has been widely used to denote a commander, general, or leader, i.e. Amir. Our movement. The feminine form of the feminine form is a mirror. A mirror. Um, when translated as prince, the word uh, emirate is 
uh, Alopius to a sovereign um, principality. Okay, so here we show that the word emir or emirate is the word for prince. Now, we should keep this in mind because we know emir is the root of emirate. And if emir can be used for king, uh, clearly emir by itself can be used for prince as well. So when we read in the Bible and their princes, it's their emirs or their emirates, their sovereign principalities, right? It's an eldest with to sovereign principality. Is not a king in the same position? And so here we go with an oldest real quick. And you have comparable in certain respects, right? That's what I mean. Typically in a, in a way which makes clear the nature of the things compared. A king, a prince, well, sovereignty. Yeah, I, I understand that. I hope everybody else does. One in the same. Prince is the king. Once the king, once he has the reign in the king's state. So we have United Emirates. So that's the prince's airlines. That is the airlines of the princes. So they're telling us, okay, so let me, let me, ask, where, who is a prince in America today? <laughs> True love! <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back. You want to pick up on uh where we left off? All right, um, uh, Mamluks. Uh, okay, okay, that's the, that's the, that's the, okay. Let me see. Yeah, jump down a little bit. Uh, East Ayub bin Sultan. Oh, yeah. yeah, keep going. Let's go. Oh. Hey, it leads to the next one. All right. Sultan and high ranking Amir had a private Mamluk corps. Most of the Mamluks in the Ayyubid service were ethnic Kapchik Turks from Central Asia who, until entering service, were converted to Sunni Islam and taught Arabic. Psalms 83. A Mamluk was highly uh, committed to his master and whom he often referred as father true love i could i i gotta try out different little sounds and it was, <laughs> and was in turn treated more as a kinsman than a slave true love! <laughs> sultan sultan as shower are you are you um Reign 1240 to 1249, the last of the Ayyubid Sultans had acquired some a thousand members, some of them freeborn from Syria, Egypt, and the uh, Arabian Peninsula by 1229. While serving in Nayib, Victor, uh, Viceroy of Egypt, during the absence of his father, Sultan al Kemal. Reign 12, 18 to 12, 38. The Mimluks were called the Salaya, a singular Salai, after their master. As Salah became Sultan of Egypt in 1240, and upon uh, ascension to the Ayyubid throne, he manipulated and promoted yeah. large numbers. Manumitted. Oh, manumitted, my bad. Sorry about that. Yeah. He manumitted and promoted large numbers of his uh, original and newly recruited members on the condition that they remain in his service. So these guys are manumitting people. All right, I accidentally Change clicked. Ownership. No, no, no. That's emancipate. Yeah. Manumit is your freedom paper. Freedom. Yeah, freedom. Okay. Freedom! All right. So once they get their manu 
mission papers, right? They're now free, right? They're no longer a Mamluk. So when they're no longer a Mamluk, they should be like true. They should be like not true lords anymore. Because if you're a Mamluk and you're a paid slave and you're a true lord, then once you're freed, you kind of you lose that, right? So so you're not really a Mamluk. So you're not really a true lord anymore. I I I, I don't know how this works, but this seems kind of kind of strange the way they just like because you know because if you pay for how can you be like if you got a master how can you be like lord of yourself who taught them this they need they ask because this ain't right let's continue all right to provision his mamluks as salah forcibly sees the that um Fais singular actor of his predecessors, Amirs. Okay, so, as... <laughs> so let's check this out. Days getting freeze from princes, okay? If from his predecessors, prince, right? Or from his predecessors, authoritative personage of positionage we're sweden we, we need to understand age okay, can't stop it's like a disease um so we need to understand that here in america we deal with emancipation and manumittance as well so, you know because again manumitten is not written in uh arabic right there it is uh written in english so you see it says or well, enfranchisement so let's go further and understand what is being shared with us and we should look for a few more things to be a little bit comparable to what we call the americanist lifestyles back to you joyce all right and so i sought to create a paramil paramilitary apparatus in egypt loyal to himself Paramilitary is outside of military that works with military. Let's look at the definition real quick. It is of an unofficial force, organized similar to military force. So something like I said, but more self in its own. Sorry, sir. So it's a non-military military or paramilitary. <laughs> Which means right. they're not sanctioned as you sanction the government. They act rogue, even though they're not rogue, they're under control. People don't know who to control them, so people don't know who to complain about them to. Two, ready? Sorry. I'm going to say kind of in the similarities of defunding somebody and they still acting as such. Exactly. See, when you want to go in and light someone up, but the law says that as a nation you can't, then you form a paramilitary. You establish a group of men that can do something of the sort of the A-team, except for it's like more than four people. It's like 25 to, you know, 500,000. But then, you know, that's, so to speak, off the books of a military, because of, of, of a of a, of a nation so then you can't blame a nation for the effery that they commit amongst the worldery like in gi joe gi joe is not the american military anymore they are working in lieu they are a paramilitary force they are using all the military stuff that's why gi joe can be arrested by the military As soon as you're ready. All right. Uh, in his aggressive recruitment and promotion of Mamluks led contemporaries to view Egypt as Salar written, according to the historian Winslow Williams. Winslow William uh, Clifford, despite his close relationship with his Mamluks, Tensions ex, uh, existed between Asala and the Salayas 
in a number of uh, Salah, Salia, uh, Mamluks were imprisoned or exiled, exiled throughout as um, Salah reign. While historian Stephen uh, Humphreys uh, uh, asserts that the Salahs increasing dominance of the state did not uh, personally threaten as Salah due to their uh, feudal uh, fidelity to him. Uh, they they Clifford, love their master. <laughs> Clifford, Clifford believes that the Salai developed an uh, anonymy, autonomy within the state that fell short of such loyalty. Opposing among, I, I mean, opposition among the Salayas and, I mean, opposition among the Salaya to Asala rose when the latter ordered uh, the uh, assassination of his assassination of his brother Abu Bakr al Laden al Adal in 1249, a task that affronted many of the Salayas and by whom was rejected. Four, um, four of the Salayas ultimately agreed to execute the controversial um, operation. Dun, dun, dun. Now, the paramilitary force is now making up some, and we're going to execute an operation. Wow. Make a move. Try out! Are you ready? All right, we're going to get into Rise of Power. Yeah. All right. Conflicts with the IU bitch. Tension between Asala Nayo Al Al Din Ayub Ayub and his uh, Mamluks came to a head later in 1249 when Louis the of France forces captured Dimietta in their bid to conquer Egypt during the Seventh Crusade. As Salah. Uh, believed Demietta should not have been uh, evacuated as was rumored to have threatened pu uh, punitive action against the Demietta garrison. The rumor uh, accentuated, accentuated by the execution of civilian nobles who, exec who executed Demietta uh, provoked a Mutiny by the garrison of this camp in Al Mashur, Excuse which me. Evacuated and provoked. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> talk about that. Evacuated and provoked. Provoked. Evacuated. Di Diamia. Is that the one you were reading about? Yeah, Demietta. Yeah. Okay. See, it came up anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Provoked. Uh, a mutiny by the garrison of his camp in Al Nashura, which uh, included numerous Salahi Mamluks. The situation was calmed after the intervention of the Atabag al Askar, commander of the military. Uh, Sakar had been. Had been no, I ain't Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's called <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Adim. In. Shinak. Ow. Sheik. I don't know. I'm bad I'm already by six seconds. I'm doing my best, man. <laughs> I'm doing my best. We should, we should pass that one. All right. Yeah. As so. the Crusaders advance. As Salah died and was succeeded by his son Al Muzan, Torna or Torin Torinshash, who was in Algeria, uh, uh, Alger, Jeriza, Upper Mesopotamia nice. at the time. Just, they call it Al Jazar uh, or Al Jazeera. 
So here it's Al Jazeera. It's in the news all the time. Yeah. Initially, uh, the Salaya welcome Tur Turan Shush secession with many greeting him and requesting confirmation of their uh, administrative post in Akhtar. Uh, assignments at his assignments at his arrival to the Egyptian frontier. However, the ranchers sought to challenge the dominance of the Salayas in the paramilitary uh, apparatus by promoting his Kurdish uh, retirement revenue from Upper Mesopotamia. Al Jazeera in Arabic, uh, in the Levant as a counterweight to the uh, predominantly Turkish Salai. So, you see uh, what these uh, evil bastards keep naming themselves, Sali Haya, or something of that nature. Uh, clearly blasphemous, uh, it's clearly a compound. Uh, actually, you know, three, compound of three, All right? Obviously, they were taught the Bible, uh, calling themselves true lords, right? And now you can see the mentality of uh, where this all started from. Again, it doesn't matter if the ideal is uh, the connection to them isn't there today obviously the mentality is still there whether you look at it from political dominance uh or or, or, or vice versa and you look at it or, or you take it a different way and look at uh the environment just like before it is a rule that is established by the church and when it's handed over to the circassian it becomes stagnant and falls apart because he that creates it doesn't know how to maintain it. No different than overthrowing a city and not knowing how to put the bricks back in the castle that you blew a hole into to get in. Just because you understand the mixture of dynamite and how to use it does not mean that you understand the mixture of mortar and how to use it. Ready to continue? Uh, um, prior to Tarantius, uh arrival at the front facing the facing the French, the the by ba, ba um, a junior regiment of the uh, Salaya, commanded by. Uh, Five years. Uh, oh, oh my goodness, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, I know. Boudoch Dari. Boudoch Dari. Something like that. I couldn't do it. Better than me. Say my name or cut your tongue out. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> True Lords! <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Party time. Miller on me. Okay. Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> Defeated the Crusaders at the Battle of Al Mashura yeah. on uh, 11 February 1250. On 27th of February, Tarantius, as new Sultan, arrived in Egypt from Has Hassan Hakan Hassan Kif. Uh, Turkish for rock fortress, where he had been a mere Arabic for prince. So right there, they're not even going to bullcrap you with, oh no no, it means any kind of leader. Oh, it could mean king. It could. It just means prince. <laughs> True lords. I can't stop. I'm like a drug. I feel empowered. I feel like I broke my slave collar. Go get me milk. Yes, master. 
followed them into the battle of Far Farishk, Farishk, um, where the Egyptians utterly destroyed the Crusaders on April 6th of April. King Louis the Ninth and a few of his surviving nobles surrendered um, and were taken as prisoners, effectively ending the Seventh Crusade. And they became true You thought you was king before, buddy! And what did they do with those people? They obviously put them through the caste system, didn't they? They took them into prisoners, so that means they put the straps on them, they made them gimps, they turned them out until they were, what, fit for sale. Because you can't sit there and sell a slave that's like a wild horse until he's, what, broken. So they captured them and they broke them. And then when everybody knew what happened to King Louis, Louis, Louis! Yo patootie. <laughs> Nobody wanted to put up a crusade against the Arabs anymore. Why? Oh, the Arabs don't just stick you with a sword and pin you in the ground. No, they take you to a dungeon, they tie you up, they rip your clothes bare naked, and then... And then you never walk straight again, son. Don't fall victim to the Saracens. Demonism. Rape Central, son. Don't get under their power. These are the men that'll turn a man out. Turn a man into a prostitute. Turn a man into a eunuch. Chop off his junk and make him guard women all his life. It'll be a giant girl against... Young women. Terrible life. Let's continue. Uh, Terrences proceeded to place his own uh, entourage and Mamluks known as the Muazamaya in position of authority to the, uh, the detriment of I can't see how to zoom in. Detriment of Sahali interest. On the second of March, uh, second of May, twelve fifty, a group of uh, disgruntled Sahali officers uh -oh. had disgruntled <laughs> Americans. <laughs> uh, officers had terrorists assassinated at his camp in uh, Far Farish. So, According to Humphreys. According to Humphreys, as Salah's frequent wars against his Ayyubid relatives likely avoided the Sal uh, Salah's loyalty to other members of the Ayyubid dynasty. Nevertheless, the Salah's Salah's um, were careful not to the, depict the assassination of Terrences as an assault against Ayyubid legitimacy. Is this, uh, is this Assassin's Creed? Seems familiar. Seems like everything they take has come from it. So, so, antiquity. when they slapped the white dude in Assassin's Creed, it really ain't, uh, no, uh, identity theft type thing. Is this really what his little job was, right? As a Mahmoud, right? He would be the assassin. As you see, they had a what? A hidden party of what? A hidden army, a paramilitary living in the city. If anybody knew who they were, they would be what? Brought to the Abud? Ayabud? And then what? Decapitated. 
Yeah, put on trial. So this seems like they're playing the Assassin's Creed game right here. So if you're not familiar with Assassin's Creed, let's continue, Joe. All right. According to Humphreys, um, as Salah's frequent, uh, I think, I'm, okay, okay. Um, that. More, legit, but rather an act against a uh, deviant of the of the Muslim policy. Moreover, an electoral college dominated by the Salahis uh, covering co convert um, to choose a successor to Terrancis among the Ayyubid emirs, which um, with opinion largely split between in Nasir Yusuf of Damascus and Al Majira, I mean Al Mug Mugnif Umar of Al Qatar. Okay, so uh what we need to understand here is that they have an electoral college, right? And that is who is doing the voting. Again, we live under a system that has the electoral college. It is an Arabic system. If I type in Electoral College, they show United, United States. We're reading about the Electoral College's decision in what, 1250, right? Around 1250, after the assassination, right, of Tehran Shai? Who shall lead us now? You killed the Aib. Aib. Uh, well, I don't know, because wh who's going to lead that's going to have the interest of us? Well, you better figure it out, because if not, we'll assassinate his ass, too. We respect the chair, not the views and opinions of the person that was just sitting in the chair. So, there's, uh, there's only one paragraph to go. We just want to, let's go over here to Wally. And uh, skip that. I just wanted to get the electoral college being brought in naturally. Um, you know, not having to just look it up to grab it and uh, to show it doesn't matter if they're the creators of it or not. What matters is is they have a caste system. They're living under a caste system. The electoral college is the vote that matters in their caste system. We are living in a caste system. Everyone stresses, you have the right to vote. We have an electoral college. How can your vote freaking matter if there's an electoral college? Go ahead, what were you saying? Get away from you? Like this dude's gonna go on for five minutes. Never mind. <laughs> so, the, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. My bad. Uh, the people who's paying attention, like you point out, their caste system. Even their slaves are over citizens. So, no matter what caste system you win, it ain't good to be a citizen. <laughs> Never good, man. Right, and who's it? It's a breakfast. Citizens, call in. He's like, oh, this thing is calling people citizens. He sold out. It's disrespecting. I mean, for real, man. If I, 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 I tuned into that breakfast club once. I was in the the. I listened for for three minutes. In the first thirty, actually, I listened to a nine minute broadcast. He says he called the people citizens three times. I was just like, I'll never tune into this again. This is before I even completely or, 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 or have the, the understanding I have now, right? No new information has come in for a brief time. Right now, to a point, my information is complete. New information comes in, then I have to stir all it around again. So right now, since my cake is complete and I'm eating it, once I heard that citizen talk, 
Uh, I was like, oh, you can't, I can't have my breakfast cake around these knuckles anymore because they, they, they don't, they, they have an all black audience for as, as far as they know, and they just, they, they're just trying to brainwash them constantly. Yes. I'm Charlemagne the Sodomite. All right, let's continue. All right, these are Lex Will's views. These aren't Joe's. We're gonna go into Wally. All right. Uh, all right, Wally. Wally is an administrative title that was used in the Muslim world, including the Caliphate and Ottoman Empire, to designate governors of administrative divisions. It is still in use in some countries influenced by Arab or Muslim culture. You know, today we just use different words. We just use senator, governor, right, mayor. We just we're using just different words. It's the same thing. It all still gonna fall down to the electoral college. Just like how they say Wali in Arabic, you know, Wali in English, governor, senator. <laughs> yep. Straight up told you. And remember, this is hidden under governing. Let me just scroll up to it real quick. This is what I wanted to hit on. Governing dynasties. Remember what the Bush family is to you. Remember what the Clinton family wanted to be unto you. Dynasties. What is the Kennedy family? Everybody in the Kennedy family is some kind of politics. Dynasty. Let's continue. All right. Um, the division of the of the the division that a Wali governs is called uh Walai. Um, or in the case of the Ottoman Turkey, Valia. The title currently also refers to a ceremonial head of the Bangs Bangs Amaru, a Muslim majority autonomous uh, region of the Philippines. Right, got their hands in everybody's cookie jar, right? So that's all we're gonna go into today, people. Uh, understand, you know, mm, this is a very unique situation that we have. We have the Crusades, when they go in for their piece of the pie, and they are in seven series utterly destroyed, and their king becomes prisoner. We have the king of Jerusalem taking the administration to Acre, and Acre is utterly destroyed. Rebuilt later, but utterly destroyed. All this leading to the Arab world where we find the true Lord, the Mamluk. And we now understand that these are all peoples behind the Caucasus gates, peoples of the Caucasus, and Turks. This is what has happened in history to such a precious place to the world. Anything you want to add, Joe? Um, no, not on this one. You know, just like you said, this is just touching the touching the surface, understanding the importance of the Crusades and how all of this stuff revolves around Egypt, Jerusalem, the Holy Land, and the dirty church. Yeah, exactly. Got to dig in to find all these facts that they try to keep from us. Sounds good. Catch you guys on the next one. <laughs> Shalom, everybody. Shalom, everybody.